First of all, welcome guys to Chile, second time here. Uh, how's that to be, to come back here three years from three years? It's good. It's always, it's always cool to go to a new place, but then I feel like coming back is even better uh, because you've already got the chance to experience it and feel out how, you know, the, the, the culture is a little bit and how the crowds are. And um, so now I feel like we have something to anticipate. Um, And last time we were here, uh, we played early in the day, and now we're playing at night. And um, so if it's anything li like last time, then I think it's going to be really was, awesome. That was three years ago. Yeah. Uh, now you come back like headline, like as one of the headliners of this festival. How does your life change during three years? Um, yeah, a lot's changed, uh, but a lot's the same too. You know, we. I think that the one advantage we've had is that we've been playing in front of thousands of people in our head for a long time. You know, when we played at the very beginning, we always imagined what this could be. You know, we never we never really put a ceiling on it. And so now that we're here, once we work through the natural nerves of being a headliner and being in front of 90,000 people, uh, there's something to be said about the amount of time we spent preparing for it. And um, so we feel prepared, and we're glad that we put in the work and the time to feel that way because we know that if we didn't feel that way, that we could go up there and get crushed. So. And now you come back with a new album. It's go this is it's gonna be the first time that you play songs like Chlorine. How how you feel about that? It it's it always is. You know, I think like when you're touring and traveling and and playing uh, a lot of the same songs. It's nice to it's it's refreshing to have a new album for us as per, I know you know for people listening as well. But when we're performing, it it is nice to have new songs and songs that we like. So yeah, to play some of these new songs from the new album, it feels really good, and it is kind of an added excitement going on stage, uh, you know, with fresh material. From your old songs, there's one in particular that that sounds a lot in our radio. That it's right. It, are you gonna play it tonight? Ride. Ride. I think we'll play it. Well, I don't know. We'll find out. We don't want to give anything away. Yeah. Let's have let's have a band meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's this guy. He's got a microphone in our face. He wants us to play Ride. What do you think? I got, yeah, yeah. I'll practice it between now. Like once let's we're done vote. with this, let's, I'll do it. Let's vote. You want to vote? Yeah. Okay. So. I vote no. Okay, I vote yes. So I guess we're doing it. Okay. <laughs> that rarely happens. No, one that, that one, always happens. One that we disagree, and two... See, this whole thing has been a ploy. Everyone thinks that I make all the decisions. Maybe it's me. It's him, man. He's the, the evil genius. L last night you were in Argentina. Today, many sites talk, talk about your your show that, that you did yesterday. Uh, um, It seems like it's a real great show, so we just want to see it. Well, we crushed it last night. <laughs> um, so what you've been hearing was probably us 
on our other accounts, uh, just spreading the word to other people. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice leaf en español? Hoja. See this hoja? This was the set last night in Argentina. We crushed oh, it. <laughs> it's been crushed. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that. I didn't either. But I, li I like that. Thanks. Um, I think Tyler would be a good, like, elementary school teacher uh, because I, I think there's a lot of a, a lot of good visuals that happen in, in his brain to, to explain things. Like that, for example. Yeah. Any, you know, I think, I think young kids trying to learn things would learn a lot better if people like this guy was out there teaching them. Okay. Yeah, like, you see this nut I found on the ground? An acorn, I think? Uh-huh. This is a hook. This nut is the festival. This festival is off the hook. Off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> off the hook. Guys, is there the idea to come back to Chile now in our own show? We would love to. Um, I don't. I don't know when or how, but I, yeah, I do. We we we're talking about it actually, and and we we do really want to make that happen. So hopefully sometime soon. But you will need to find like a great place to, for all the the things that include your show. Right? Yeah, no, we we like to try to play. I know that a festival show is not necessarily a like a headline show at a regular tour, um, and we appreciate all of our fans who've spent a lot of money on a festival ticket just to see us, and um, that's something that means a lot to us. It's really hard to get to every country, and especially just with the, the amount of time it takes to travel, and you know, with us trying to. I don't know. Maintain our health too. Uh, it's hard to get do a tour everywhere. Um, so, in a sense, we like to think that doing a festival in a country is kind of like our way of saying, "Hey, we want to come see you. We want to, we want to meet you guys. We want to play a show for you guys." But we also understand that, you know, it's they're sacrificing a lot by spending a, a huge dollar amount on a ticket at a festival to see us, and so we appreciate that. Especially mm -hmm. once you have a fan base that is you know, so interested and invested in what we've made. And um, it was probably one of the hardest things we've done is to show them what we were excited about and hoping that they would, um, I don't know, agree. I think it's a really cool thing to say that uh, we, we play a lot of the songs off the new record live. And that's the true test is does the song stand on its own in a live setting? And, um, and to see that we're able to play so many new songs live and our fans in the audience respond so well to it is, is better than we could have imagined. Uh, when we were in the studio recording it, I don't think there was ever really, nobody in there was like, well, here we go. This is the song that was written mm -hmm. to be a hit. We loved it, just like we loved all the other songs, and I think we still do. Um, I think that there are sometimes artists or bands that will write a song, uh, and it will become a hit, And but it was, it was one that they didn't really like very much, maybe, and then they end up hating playing it every night. Or sometimes even maybe they have resentment that it did get big. I don't think we feel that. I think that it's, it's another song in our set list full of songs that we love, and we're grateful to play it. You know, every night. Um, I guess for me right now, the song, um, it really means, it represents a moment in my life when I was writing a song. And I was I was writing songs just because that's all I knew what to do, you know, how to deal with the things I was mm -hmm. dealing with. And songwriting was, a, was an outlet for that. So now, um, a lot of those problems have been resolved as far as, you know, what's my purpose, why am I here, and, mm -hmm. you know, even not having enough money to to get a new car because it breaks down and so but it's really cool to watch a song like that that was written in a certain time of my life still be applicable to where I am now you know with uh, you know I talk about the word silence a lot in that song and um, even right now there's a band playing as I'm talking into the microphone we are constantly surrounded by sound um, and as much as we enjoy going out and playing shows and seeing our fans and touring, um, I think that at the same time that song reminds us that we still need that silence. We still need to reset and um, be alone and not not put all of our identity in what people see of us, but taking a moment to um, really inspect yourself 
and finding identity in that. Gracias por estar aquí hoy. Hello, Chile. We're 21 Pilots. I'm Josh. I'm Tyler. And thank you for watching. Uh, we're very glad to be back here, and we're excited to perform tonight. And uh, you're watching Publi Metro. One of the biggest squares on a microphone to ever exist. <laughs> Very true. To anyone pilots aqui comigo, so guys, second time playing in Lollapalooza Brazil, second time in Brazil, and I was here in 2016 when you played here for the first time. I remember, Tyler, you even climbed uh, on top of the stage. Yeah. <laughs> Do you plan on doing something as radical this time? <laughs> uh, we'll see. You know, you kind of just make them. Uh, in the moment decision, um, but that's what's so great about playing live music. I think that we don't know exactly how the show is going to go until it happens, and so um, you don't know. We'll see. So, um, Trench expands the story that you began telling with Blurry Face. Did you always plan to have this narrative arc, or was it something that happened spontaneously? Yes. Ah. <laughs> no, I yes. didn't say. I didn't ask for. A, I didn't ask binary. I said these are or that. <laughs> yeah, I think that. I I think that um, we've had a lot of ideas for a really long time, and um, so to be able to continue telling the story is really up to how people um, kind of take it and um, expand with us. I guess so. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been really great to have um, people be really accepting and, um, and dive in as well, um, just allowing us to be able to continue. Beautiful. Bom, eu comentei que o álbum Trench continua um arco narrativo que começou com Blurry Face. E daí eu perguntei se ele sempre tiver essa intenção de contar uma história ou se foi algo que aconteceu espontaneamente. Daí o Josh até brincou. E daí ele falou que eles têm essa, esse privilégio de poder contar a história para o público e que eles ficam muito felizes em saber que o público quer receber essas informações, quer receber esses inputs da banda e que eles, é isso, vem contando uma história ao longo é, desse tempo aí de banda. É, overall, the last record, I would say, has a more serious tone. Uh, would you say that's a re reaction to the times we're living in now? Uh, no, not really. I, okay. think that, I think it's a reaction to me learning how to play the bass guitar. For the first <laughs> time. So, um, and then uh, also just having time to work on a record for a year straight without touring. You know, most of the time we'd been writing and kind of recording while we were touring. And uh, that's kind of tough. So to be able to have a a year to just focus on the record, I think that the importance of that record was heightened and maybe maybe lends itself to being a, a bit of a more serious record because of that, um, because of dealing with that pressure of following something up like Blurry Face. So I think it was just a, a natural reaction, but also a challenge. And uh, I think I think we stepped up to it. Beautiful, thank you. Uh, can we take you trench? O álbum da banda tem um tom mais sério e perguntei se isso seria, na verdade, uma reação aos tempos em que estamos vivendo. E daí o um, Tyler aqui respondeu que, na verdade, primeiro ele brincou, ele falou, não, acho que na verdade tem a ver com o fato de eu ter aprendido a tocar baixo. Ele falou, não, na verdade o que aconteceu foi que a gente foi comprando muitas músicas, mas a gente estava sempre fazendo turnês e tudo mais, depois a gente tirou um tempo para se concentrar em fazer esse álbum e foi uma reação natural fazer essas músicas com esse tom talvez um pouco mais sério e é isso aí. Bom, thank you so much guys, have a great concert thank you. and thanks for talking to us. Thanks for coming and thanks for listening to this. We This is our first time here to Colombia and so we're really excited. It's, it's actually kind of rare now that we go somewhere that we haven't been, so we're excited.
Anything you would like to add? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. Uh, we we don't know much about a place until we play mm. a show there, and so we're looking forward to getting in front of everyone and playing. So yeah. I gotta tell you, I was in Nashville when you guys opened uh, the trench tour. And so could you guys tell me like how how does it change from the setting you had uh, for uh, your concert from being on a festival now? I think one of the biggest things. A lot of times when we're playing our own shows, um, people are there to see us and festivals it can be different and there can be a bunch of people that maybe aren't here to see us but are just casually checking it out or watching and um so that yeah that's a difference i feel like we we try to work hard to impress everybody mm -hmm. but there is a, a sense of feeling like we have to win people over sometimes at festivals which is really fun and uh there's a whole bunch of other artists as well playing and um you know, in some ways can feel like a competition in a good way. <laughs> okay. And, um, we, you know, we like to win. <laughs> and what about the setting? I mean, how many drum kits do you guys use when you're touring? Because you're also going to Lollapalooza, uh, you, you have several countries in Latin America that you guys are visiting. So how does the setting change? Because I, I actually became a fan after watching you in Nashville. I liked your music, but I was like, okay, I'm, I, I want to check this out. I want to see how it works live. It's my passion. And you got me there. I was that casual guy just in Nashville. I'm just going to go and check the show. And now I'm like, with this guy from the radio station, I gotta, I, I just keep telling them, you gotta see these guys perform. So uh, tell, tell us about that. Tell us about the setting. T tell us about the live setting. Tell us about the drum kits, about everything. Um, <clears throat> well, we travel with, with our gear, which is nice. You know, we used to, we used to show up at a place and uh, hopefully what they had there was, would work. Um, and, it, and it usually did. Now we travel with it, so we, we have the same ones. Are you asking how many during the show yeah, we have? No, not exactly or, during or the show. Or from show to show? Josh has 495? Four. <laughs> 94. 494 yeah. drum kits. Okay. And they're all over the world. Welcome to Paraguay, guys. I'm so honored to be sharing this interview with you. How are you feeling? Feeling pretty good. This is our first time here. First time here in Paraguay, first time here in South America? No, because you first played time. in 2016 in Argentina, isn't it? Yeah, correct. How was your presentation? And how is your show, I mean, in Argentina? Because you were having a massive show, a huge show. Both of you are amazing on stage. Where all that energy came from? Uh, we found it in Argentina. We found the energy. Um, no, I mean... I think the, I mean, that show was amazing. The, the, the crowd was incredible. And we love South America. It's, it's like a whole, other, a whole other level here. You're going to know that here in Paraguay, you have a very, very strong fandom. They support, they, they support your band. They support your music. In all the platforms, they, they can support you. Tell me, have you ever read a message from a Paraguayan fan? I'm sure we have. It's hard to keep track of all the messages, but... Um, it's not very often anymore that we get to go somewhere that we've never been before. And so we try to, you know, really soak in everything about a new place. And so Paraguay, is, uh, this is our first show here. And uh, we don't know what to expect exactly. We don't, we don't expect much just because we want to be surprised. So okay. when we go out and there, I'm we're hoping. And wait at the moment of the show where you can connect with people. When you, in 2009, just started as a band, did you imagine that you will be touring all around the world and connecting like you connect right now, nowadays, with your fans? I think we did. I don't know if, I don't know if what we thought was exactly what, what has happened, but I think that we've always dreamed pretty big, had pretty big goals, and um, that was stuff that we talked about early on in the beginning is kind of like how big those goals can be. Well, guys, I don't want to take more time away from you. I know that you have to, I don't know if you make a kind of previously preparation. I don't know if you have a kind of ritual before go on stage. If you have, tell me if you want it. Yeah, we, uh, we relearn the songs every time we play. So we just got to go practice real quick in our green room. 
Thank you, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you so much for your time. Esta fue la entrevista que nosotros compartimos en exclusiva a través de www.asuncioni.co. Yeah, totally. Um, but ultimately, it's it's you know it's up to them to kind of if they want to do that and make it their own, then it is up to them, and they have. Um, and so, yeah, driving in today, seeing a bunch of people kind of um, wearing the colors, it's a really cool thing. Uh, you know, it's people making it their own and, and taking pride in it is really special to us. Yeah, I mean, we're always... We're always working on something, always creating. We um, we play a lot of music live, and it's a very inspiring thing to do. So we like to try to harness that inspiration. Um, but as far as what exactly is next, um, we're not going to tell you. Yeah, I think talking about anything deep or serious is helpful. Um, I think that yeah we've we've learned that just just um, sharing things and and kind of getting it out is is really important and uh, you know very early on in our band when we started playing music together we would have really cool conversations with people um, that ended up just kind of getting pretty deep um, even when we play small clubs we just hang out and, and have conversations and yeah I think it is healthy and important to do. Things to me, ones and zeros, there go this symphony. Anybody listening? Ones and zeros, count to infinity.